Welcome back, once again adventurers, to Let's Play Chaos Head. In the last episode, Takumi braced himself for the worst, but it turns out that Yua's favor involves purchasing the soon-to-be-released post-awakening figurine of Seratan from Bloodtune uh, sometime tomorrow, which... Uh, yeah, Takumi's not too happy about it, but then again, he has bitten the bullet and agreed to a request, so uh, there is no turning back, I'm afraid. <laughs> Leaving Takumi alone with his thoughts. <laughs> my cheeks were naturally slipping into a smile, so I hastily pulled my face back into place. <laughs> <laughs> or perhaps it could be the other way around. Well, if you were going to do that, you uh, had a perfectly good opportunity uh, a moment ago, but uh, you didn't. So... <laughs> <laughs> like any female could be could ever be finer than Sarah. I hate to break it to you, Takumi, but you're not going to be eternally seventeen either. You're kind of stuck that with that. I picked up the figure of her and rubbed it against my cheek. Sarah Tan seemed happy. Of course she is, she's uh, a figurine. And so begins the dread. And of course, like all the institutions, Suome Academy has you guessed it, exam. Greets! There! Once a math teacher, what was his name again? Not like it really mattered. Left the classroom. Today's classes finally reached their end. Everyone chatted about where they planned to go next. While the students and clubs gathered with their fellow club members and headed off to different rooms, there were also a lot of people preparing to head straight home. Normally, Takumi would be one of them, but not today. As soon as the closing bell rang, I too usually got my stuff together for going home. But today I fretted in my seat, making an effort not to meet my classmates' gaze. And of course, if uh, Takumi's run of bad luck is uh, to be believed, a certain someone is uh, going to pick up on this change in routine, and that isn't going to be a good thing. After this came my promise with the Ewer. Ordinarily, it would be ultra exciting to be waiting to head out somewhere with a girl. But right now, I was nothing but melancholy. I couldn't calm down. My stomach ached. It was the first time I promised to meet with a girl, or every, so I had no clue as to how to handle myself. Granted, this is also the first time that Takumi has promised to meet anyone at all whatsoever. In the first place, was you really coming? I started to think that maybe yesterday had been one big prank, and as I waited here, she was watching me from the shadows and giggling. Well, if she was watching, um, that would actually be an indication that she is actually here. In a certain sense, that might be better than if she really came. In fact, there was no need to wait for her so faithfully. Wouldn't it be fine if I forgot all about her and left? Alrighty, time to go home. Whatever the case, we were in different grades, and if I stood her up today, we probably never meet again for the rest of our lives. Decision made, I stood up. 
ったく何してんだ And speak of the devil. Someone pounded me on the back. I didn't have to see his face to know whose doing it was. Mizumi kun was the only person in class curious to call out to me, and also to do that. You don't have to leave? If you do, you'll be able to get out of time. I was called to call out the Takumi's Onsokchokki. Would you believe that he was just sitting at his desk, pondering his thoughts? I'm going to go home. Sharp as attack, this one. Eh? How do you know? Nanda, you zuboshi ka yo? Dou shite? Nanda ka, yake ni soa soa shite ta kara na. Kyoshitsu no iriguchi wo sakki kara nando mo kini shite ru shi. Yeah, unfortunately, Takumi had his fair share of tells, which was pretty much a strike against him. Sharp. But it'd be better not to say anything careless here. You mustn't forget, Takumi. At this school, you've got to stand out as little as possible. You've got to be like here. Yeah. I'm afraid it's too late for that. So, Mizumi kun wasn't a bad guy, but he could re really get obnoxious at times like this. Learn to read between the lines. And, uh, speaking of which, I twitched. Looking gingerly in the direction Yuu's voice had come from, I saw her standing timidly at the entrance to our classroom. What a mess. It was Mizumi's fault that I'd lost my chance to escape. Yes, he very much is uh, as shocked as we are. And usually for him, Mizumi seemed shaken. Throwing an arm around my shoulder, he looked at me steadily. Oi, Taku! What do you mean? Are you my wife? I told Mizumi Kun a million times that I had no interest in the third dimension. Let's hope that uh, Daisuke and Nanami never meet. Ever. Hikikomori no kuseni, nani o dou yatta ra anna ii onna to shiriyaeru nda. Probably should have just kept your mouth shut, Takumi, but oh well. So that's my idea. Gyakunan Sarata de Kotoka. Eh? Kono Kono! He grabbed me by the jaw until I started to wobble. With that, Mizumi kun finally released me. So, Ka. Yonaka ni wa monozuki te no mo irunda na. けど、タクがまともな性癖を持ってたみたいで、少し安心したぜ。性癖って、それに彼女とは別に何も。<笑>そうかそうか、頑張れよ、タク。Now it's probably a good time to head to that anime store, otherwise there are going to be huge uh, waiting lines. Mizumi kun wasn't listening to me. Getting single handedly worked up about it, he thumped me on the back even more fiercely than before. He def was definitely teasing me. He says with a smile on his face. <laughs> As Mizumi drove me away, I stumbled up to Yua. In the end, I hadn't been able to run away. And yes, I'm familiar with the fact that I didn't use the honorific there. I don't care. 
迷惑でした Yes, it did, in the form of Daisuke Misumi. Ah,、uh, yeah. It had caused me tons of trouble. When I took back at Misumi, he grinned and stuck his middle finger up at me. I had a hard time telling whether he was picking a fight with me or trying to encourage me. Probably the former. It'd be aggravating to keep dealing with him. I'd better get out of here, out of school post haste. すいません。昨日会ったばかりなのにこんなお願いをしてしまって。いや。あ。So the conversation died. <coughs> so, so nervous. Going home from school together with a three new girl. Why? It almost made it seem like I had a wife. I thought that kind of thing belonged in a world with no relation to me. I never dreamed of being able to experience it. But at the moment, I was coming under silent pressure from you all. How could I be so nervous when all we were doing was walking side by side? And I had no clue as to you as to her identity or her goal. What could she expect from a creepy otaku like me? Otaku? No. Huh? Hi? Ah, yeah. I started talking so suddenly, surprised it caused my voice to come out real. It seemed that Yua was nervous as well. Her expression was strained. It made her seem rather innocent for an older girl. She might be unexpected to the eye. That said, though, it was all I could do just to glance at her out of the corners of my eyes. Looking at her straight on shouldn't have been a big deal, but sheer embarrassment made it impossible for me. おとといのブラチュー見ましたよねえう、うん。私、一箇所だけいまいちよくわからないところがあったんですけど、すすむくんがセイラちゃんのピンチに駆けつけてきて、助けてくれますよね。でも、どうしてすすむくんはセイラちゃんが危ないってわかったのかなって。I'm sure there's an answer to that question. あ。あれは、えっと、先週の会に伏線があったんだ。セイラの携帯が鳴ってるシーンが一瞬だけ挿入されてて、着信表示で進むの名前が出てる。That's an inter interesting way of、uh, hinting at the next episode. Clever. Very subtle. あ、ああ。そういえば、そんなシーンありましたね。ヤマタクはそういう細かい伏線をあちこちに貼るのが好きなんだキンゴルでも似たようなことをやってたヤマタクキンゴルいやヤマタクっていうのはブラチューの監督の愛称だよでヤマタクがブラチューの前に監督やってたアニメがキンゴルへえじゃあヤマタクさんって有名な監督さんなんですねまあ、僕は好きな方かな。なんでかっていうと。And we're at animate. As I lectured this,、uh, you were on this and about、uh, on this and that about anime. We arrived in front of animate. Wow, we got here way faster than I thought. I got it so much into it so much that. I talked way too much and I completely butchered that reading. It was because Yua was good at listening. She heard me out with true interest while I showed off my knowledge in all kinds of areas. That was why, even though I was aware it had to be a trap, I found myself wanting to tell her everything I knew. I was supposed to be bad at talking. This was the first for me. I could converse with her. Almost as if I were chatting online. What a strange sensation. Ah, <laughs> Well, if you wanted to before, now you're stuck. 
Not that you could back out anyway. Her demeanor growing increasingly nervous, you were asked one of the clerks about pre-ordering the post-awakening version of Sarah. I simply watched from beside her. I've been casing the place for a chance to escape, but you were kept throwing anxious looks at me, so I couldn't move an inch. Afterward, at Ewer's request, we looked around the rest of the store. An overjoyed Ewer told me, no matter how much money I brought here, I'd want to buy more. But I didn't have the energy to smile back at her. Apparently, Ewer took the train to and from school. As a result, I had to accompany her to the Shinsen train station. She seemed gentle and timid, but she was actually pretty stubborn. She couched her demands in such a way that they didn't seem at all demanding or selfish, probably because they're not. That was dark of her, man. You had to be one of those dark characters. You abruptly asked me right as we arrived at the station. A cell phone, huh? I feebly shook my head. Well, there is one possible way. What did she plan to accomplish by contacting me? Surely she didn't intend to make me email her over every little thing. Now hopefully she's not going to send emails that are very reminiscent of Moe Kiryu because her text emails were terrifying to say the least. あ、でも、西条くん、パソコン持ってましたよね。私も持ってるから、メールアドレスを交換しませんかどどうしてえ、その不機嫌の発売日に取りに行かなくちゃいけませんよね。その時にまた一緒にまだ一人でアニメ8
base of operations with uh, our good friend Mr. Grimm. And uh, I'm actually going to call that an episode here, adventurers. And when we return, we shall see what Mr. Grimm has to say on uh, Takumi's current circumstances. As always, dear adventurers, until next we meet.